Yeah. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to recap for this recording. Why is marketing important? Christina said it's the only way you can reach a large amount of a large mm -hmm. potential customer base in one fail swoop. And, a, and it's the easiest way. And she said the a harder way would be door knocking, to which I replied, true. But at least door knocking might be more effective. You know, and and I say that because door knocking is your face to face then. And you and mm -hmm. not only are you marketing, but you're introducing yourself and you have you build rapport and that kind of thing. And then Asia said that what you say again since uh you just ate something, Asia. <laughs> Sorry, I haven't really eaten all day. Okay. Um starving. So uh what I said was like even if you don't get a client right away because maybe you don't have a lot of followers on social media. Um, for the people that do see your marketing materials, it adds legitimacy and makes you look professionals if you have it branded. Um, you know, it's like first in, like, what is that? First impressions, I guess. You right. Know, it's well done. And, and maybe uh, it's a memory, memory trigger or something like that. If somebody sees your, yeah. 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 Very good. Does it take them what, like 15 times before they even remember your name? So, right. Yeah. Um, anybody else? Someone mentioned that you can um, present yourself as being very um, professional, which I which I found valuable. You you know you're in your branding. You're saying I'm I'm very legitimate, and right. maybe that was you, Aisha. Yeah, that's probably that was how she. Yeah, I think. I, so. Am I cutting out? Is my is my internet terrible? You know you're doing fine. Yeah. Okay, good. I turned off that uh, blurring or the background. That might have helped. Yeah, to help. Anybody else? Just unmute and talk. Marketing can work uh, independent of your efforts, so you can have marketing that is doing work for you, even though even when you're doing other things, um, you know, interacting face to face, you have to be there talking to somebody. But marketing can be somebody reading an article of yours visiting your social media it can be working with you or not even when you're asleep true as for example my marketing with the organ ria that sends out emails all the time while i'm sleeping <laughs> and you're here now <laughs> yes it's very true um gonna go on here Thought it's gonna go on here. Okay, so am I still sh screen sharing? Yep. Okay. Why is marketing important? Well, I'm gonna do in the yellow is why marketing, um, without marketing, how it could sabotage you. Um, how you market your business determines if your enterprise will be successful or not. Um, marketing is a tool used to create and maintain demand, relevance, reputation, reputation. I think reputation, I should say repetition, <laughs> um, and compete and a lot more. But without it, your business is likely to go out of business due to lack of revenue. Or in our case, if you're trying to find houses to buy, um, if you're not marketing, you're at the will and whim of others to bring you a deal, right? Uh, marketing, for, why is it important, is where you engage with customers and potential customers. It's, you know, so there's a lot of platforms out there. Marketing helps to build and maintain the company's reputation, which is what Asia said. Marketing helps to build relationships between a business and its customers. And by that, uh, we, that's, you know, not just your image and that kind of thing, but it, it helps to build a relationship and it might take years. It might take years for some of that kind of stuff to work. Marketing is a communication channel, which is what Chris was talking about. Use inform customers and they can come to them whenever they're looking on Facebook or YouTube or however you might be marketing. Marketing helps build revenue and that's, 
that's key right there, right? Building revenue. Out of these five, do any of them stick out to you that's like, that's why I need to do it? Build revenue, right? All right, I'm fine. Um, number six, so I actually have 10 here. Marketing aids and providing insights about your business. Um, I know like on my, and I've seen it on others, uh, my Grateful Nuts Homes website, it says that a percentage of my in, my revenue from buying and selling houses goes to my church, to Rotary and that kind of stuff. So it's, you know, it's way down at the bottom, but if somebody should scroll, it's there. Um, marketing, uh, marketing helps your business to maintain re relevance. Very important. You're not relevant if you're not marketing. You're just not relevant anymore. Marketing creates revenue options, um, which means that you might expand your, your revenue options through marketing. Marketing helps you make informed decisions and marketing helps your business compete and we're gonna move on. Marketing helps your business compete. How, anybody have ads? on uh, Google, paying for ads. Anybody listed on Google for their business? Just getting started on that, not yet. Okay, it's important. So if you have, if you have a name, <laughs> a brand, and a website, pretty important to have a website if you're gonna be on Google, <laughs> so <laughs> um, then you're ready to start putting that up there. I started oh, a good 10 years ago and I was instantly almost number one, one, two, and three, because there weren't so many competitors back then in the area. And, and that's not advertising, that's just listing with SEO You can move on. Okay, your marketing strategy. All right, this is pretty fun for me because I got my degree in business marketing back in 1983. You know how long ago that is? almost 40 years, next year will be 40, right? A lot's changed since then. But back then the marketing strategy was called the marketing mix, simple. Marketing strategy would consist of media. And I'm just, this is the list of the media and where you, because that's where it was simple back then. You could do TV ads, billboard ads, radio ads, magazine ads, national newspaper, national magazines, whatever have you. And for a small business, it might be, you'd put definitely put ads in the newspaper, the local radio, the local flyers, creating flyers to place on cars and that kind of stuff, you know, put it up on bulletin boards with tear off strips, what have you. Um, that, that was the good old days, but now we're in the digital age. It's much harder. The way you market has become infinite. And back then, this is the old marketing mix. There was four Ps. Today, there's seven Ps. Back then, it was just place. Where's the place they're going to find the goods? Where's the place they're going to learn about the goods? That kind of thing, or services. The product, the product was is part of the marketing because your product, in this case, it's you, it's me, it's your business, it's the product. Uh, the price, and you can see here on the right that I wrote price, high price meant high quality, low price meant uh, maybe a deal. I wrote low quality, but maybe just a deal or something like that. Um, it's like uh, Coca-Cola next to RCA kind of thing or generic back then. Promotion. Um, that, that's your advertising, public relations. Now, public relations mean it's, means it's free advertising, like you get your name and business mentioned in a newspaper article, radio, somebody, you know, back then, that's what it meant, <laughs> okay? And place, place, so it's, I already started that with that one. So we'll go on today, it's the seven Ps, which is a lot more complicated. You got promotion, and I like how they have the megaphone and the YouTube on there, the email, the whatever, it, all, all these kind of things. Um, that would be your website too. The process today, there's 
automated processes for sending out uh, letters, text messages, ringless voicemails, all sorts of stuff. Um, the people, the people could be the people, your, your virtual assistants to the people that you target, your market, your target market. Uh, physical evidence, that's, that is like uh, Chris mentioned, well, I don't know, somehow we mentioned it, but the physical evidence could be your website. We'll, I'll give you some more clues on these and the place, um, the, uh, the place in our business is kind of, you know, where do you find the, where do you find the marketing? Where do you, where, where did people find you? And the price, we'll go on to that here in a second. So I'll move on. So products, in our case, uh, the product is ourselves. Like I said, it's in the center of every element of marketing mix. Um, what you wanna do is ask the question, what problem or issue does you, do you solve for your target customer? And today is on, we're gonna be focusing on people. So we're gonna be talking a lot about your target market, your target customer. What can you make your service or prod, how can you make your service or product stand out among your competition? And what can you add to your product or take away from it to increase its, vis its visibility? And sometimes, you know, you might be clouding too much out there and you might need to take away. And then again, you might need to add strong marketing, uh, um, let's say, um, oh, I can't remember what they're called. The pages where that just get the information. Oh, it'll come to me. Asia, do you know what that is? Well, Asia, I'm trying to think of the kind of web page that just gathers that you put out there. Uh, that just gathers information? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You mean like a single page, like a yeah on on this on a website that will you know like your a landing website. page? What's it called? A landing page. Landing page. Okay, landing page. Thank you. I think of that I mean, or a listicle. Like What'd you say, Christina? Uh, a listicle. And I've never heard that term. Oh, what's that? It's where, you know, like if somebody goes up and searches, um, I want to find the best, I don't know, microwaves. Um, advertisers will pay to be on a listicle, basically, um, on, you know, num being ranked one through 10 or whatever. So yeah. whoever kind of pays more or whatnot will be up at the top, depending on what the product is. And who do you pay that to? I have no idea. I can find out, though. Can you? It's probably Google, but yeah, that'd be cool. I believe that the landing page is what you're talking about, and that would be connecting your Facebook, your Instagram, you know, all of your your social medias together. Is that what you mean? The landing page? Yes. Uh, no, yeah. I mean, you can use it for that. <clears throat> a landing page is like, it's like a website, but if you don't have a website, it, it's basically a page on a website. So you can just have it, and then you can make it do whatever you want. It could be you want to gather newsletter email addresses like you can do a landing page through mailchimp um if you have a website you could make a tab on your website where they would click on it and it would go to the landing page um i mean like if you do an ad and you're like hey and it's a promoted ad on facebook you could be like click here and it's a hyperlink and when they click on it it takes them to a landing page uh, the landing page doesn't have to be hosted by your website. It's hosted by an independent platform, independent company like MailChimp. So hmm. does that make sense? So if you wanted it to be like a page where you, you could have people click on your social media, it could be, I mean, it could show the little icons, you know, where they I'm gonna, click on it. I'm going to share a page it's on a one of my... I'm going to share a page on one of my websites. However, it's not really landing page because it gives them options to back out. Uh, new share here. Yeah, landing page is just a web page that's not hosted by your website. It's yeah. like a different platform. Like I didn't realize that. Like yeah. Interesting. I thought you could, I think I can have landing pages hosted by my website, but I wouldn't want all of this up here on my landing page. 
Uh, now this is like a foreclosure page. And so tell us about your situation. And I do get stuff from that. Um, there's another one kind of thing, but it's not really a landing page like, like we're saying because it has all this available on it. Yeah. Right. So this could be considered a landing page if it was an independent, you know what I mean? Like if you created that right. page with a third party app, basically. I'm sure I can do. So I use um, Investor Carrot, it's called. I have the whole time. So it says powered by Carrot. And, I, and I'm pretty sure I can create landing pages there, but I just haven't really done it. Okay. I will unshow that. <laughs> And go back to this. Do you know how much money you pay a month to host your website? Like through Carrot? Does Carrot charge you? Um, uh, like 450 a year. Okay. Yeah. I have a couple of sites there. So um, they give you three sites for their membership. There, there's probably a setup fee. Okay. All right, moving on. Okay, so we were going through the seven Ps, right? What was my last page? Product. All right, product, promotion, um, getting, here's some list of some ways besides the landing page, which is good. Um, online advertising, blogging, YouTube, video content, social media advertising, and stories, and reels. I've been doing reels lately, and it's been really helpful. Um, I went to my um, high school reunion last weekend. It was, you know, not this last weekend, but the weekend before. And um, I had seen these people in 13 years, plus my name has changed several times. And, and there was this guy that kept going, Grace Whittacombe, Grace Whittacombe, Grateful Nuts Homes, Grace Whittacombe. I'm like, how does he know me? <laughs> like, it's because of my videos I suddenly started doing on the flip I'm doing. I thought it was pretty, pretty cool. Um, social media advertising, uh, direct marketing such as mailers. I do a lot, a lot of mailers. I spend about $600 a month at least on my mailers. In-person contacts such as phone calls, business cards, and networking. These are all no-brainers, right? Uh, process. Okay, I mentioned the process. Process of delivering your, well, in our case, it's not about delivering your product or your service to the clients. It's really about capturing leads and and continuing. So the last th thing there that I write is the number of touches required to loop in a client or to retain a client is growing every year. And now, I mean, it used to be back in my days, five. You know, you would try to try five days to get the sale. Now it's more than twenty because there's so much noise out there you just have to keep keep touching them with emails text messages letters what have you to so they can remember you any questions on process okay people all right and we're going to talk about target market today people Excellent customer service not only converts to sales or leads to buying more houses, but can increase your client base by for referrals or through referrals. It's important that everyone who represents your brand, and I would include like us in this group in Oregon Rhea, we represent each other's brands, even though we have different brands, right? But as a, as a group, Oregon Rhea is, is known for being honest, friendly, timely, um, and helping each other, right? So if, if you're out there and you need a, a lifeline, you have your organ RIA as, an, as a lifeline and someone to call and say, I don't know, but I can get the answer for you because we all are, even though we have separate brands, we have one brand together and that's Oregon Real Estate Investors Association. And I just wanna say that, thank you very much. I appreciate you all. 
<laughs> and the other part of people is your target market. Physical evidence uh, is, you know, nowadays it could be online. It could be those cards you send. It's physical. I, I include the QR code as physical ev evidence on my mail outs to the attorneys, to the uh, probate PRs, the personal representatives. I have QR codes on them I so that they don't just have to look for my website to see if I'm legit. They see a QR code and maybe they never, ever scan it, but that just says legit on its own, right? Um, examples of proof, you know, physical office. How many of you have a physical office for this business? Not yet. You do? Not yet. Not yet. You thinking about it? I did it once. Three years, I had an office and that was the big, big expense. So working out of my home is much, much better. <laughs> I had employees and all that kind of stuff, and that it didn't work out. I find VAs are better, so I'm just saying that. But you know, I know uh, Julie, you do is for your um, physical therapy, or is that right? Physical therapy, massage therapy. Yeah, and I was actually I I made a mistake. I was thinking like I have a home office, but you mean a brick and mortar, mm -hmm. like a shop? Yeah, I do. Yeah, we have a fit. So, so the speakers that came to the meeting the other last week, a week ago, they went to my old office that I haven't been at since 2017. It's still up on Google for Oregon Real Estate Investors Association. Mm -hmm. I said, oh my gosh, I need to change that. But per, really subconsciously, I'm sure I left that there for legitimacy up there mm -hmm. on Google. Anyway, I better change it because that's not good. That's not good for the brand, right? Mm -hmm. um uh, other physical evidence can be your website signage on vehicles printed cards and um, that kind of thing I, I i you guys most of you have seen probably the sign on my car the signs on my car and i was at a at a house today she, um, came over to write up the offer we've already agreed on it this woman and we're sitting at her dining room table and i see her her books on the table. And I say, I see you're a believer. I said, oh yes. She says, I am too. And, she, and then I asked her what church she goes to. She goes to my church and we go to the same church. And, and that's how she got my information was she saw it on my car. So I'm like, yeah, finally. <laughs> um, this, it also includes your email address. You might think about just having it at Gmail, but um, at your website address as well so once you get a website then you have your ad at that your name at that website or whatever um place okay play now means placement um it's not about location it's about um getting your information out to the right places is facebook a good place for you is um linkedin a good place for you where do you want to spend your time your money with your VAs working on these things, your placement is that kind of thing. So it's not before we were talking about, you know, all these things, but then you need to look at and discern which are the best places for your um, promotional, your promotion. Um, but that comes with the understanding of your target audience and who is your target audience. Uh, and then just, I like this, you want to target them at the right stage in their thinking cycle in, in this case, which will make it clear where you should promote your products and how that fits on to your, your online and your real world marketing mix. And price, there's Zach, hi Zach. <laughs> we talk a lot about price during our um, deal structuring in our Oregon RIA um, meeting for, deal deep dive um, and we talk about things like creative financing and that kind of thing and it's all in how you present it and that now we're getting to negotiation and negotiation is part of marketing anything to do with sales getting the sale is to do with marketing what you offer your client is part of your brand and your offer needs to be displayed in, in confidence in yourself that it's good for your your audience and you can learn more about deal structuring when you come to Deal Deep Dive. 
I see some chats going on here. Let's see what we got. In take me. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> thanks, Tracy. Yeah, that's what we were talking about when we we're talking about landing pages. Yeah. Uh, okay. Next. Okay, here's a review of the seven P's in case you didn't get it. And you guess this will be available through the recording. You might, you know, fast forward and stuff. Um, product, promotion, process, people, physical evidence, place, and price. And then I want to give you some homework before next next month. Oh, great. Here's my song again. <laughs> Too long for Live or let, let die. Um, this, I'm sorry, this is your homework, but that's not much. That's just a, a way like to check out the American Marketing Association. Oh, no, but what I really wanted it to be was um, for you to figure out what your marketing budget would be. I, I guess I promoted the wrong slide here. So anyways, think about if you, if you can spend $5, 10 minutes a week, or 30 minutes a week, or $100 a month, whatever, what is your your marketing budget, time and money, right? All right. I cut that. Huh. All right, hang on. I'm going to go all the way through this till I can get it to stop. All right. <laughs> all right. We are in the, I said we we're going to talk about target market is a, target market is identifying who is your best and most likely customer. And I want to mention this, we are in the people business. In case you think we're in the real estate business, we're really not. I mean, that's our that's our vehicle, but we're really in the people business. Case in point, um, tonight I mentioned about going over to that lady's house and sitting at the table talking and she needed to sell the house real fast. Why? Because her fiance wants her to, and, and they're going to get a house together. Within two minutes of entering the house, I found out that she's never met her fiance face to face, but they've been talking over uh, the internet for four months. <laughs> right? <laughs> 70, 77 years old, and her fiance is 68. And uh, this is all things I figured out. I asked her a lot of questions because red flags, red flags. And so we sat and talked about this. I did not fill out the form and, and give her um, a, a purchase agreement, basically. Um, she said she had a way to, she could wait a week while, while, and give this a beat. While, you know, I said, I'm going to do some background check. I'm going to turn this over to, uh, um, I have a friend that's hot in the Eugene police force. I'm going to give it, I'm going to ask him to look into it. And she's like, you know, but I had to work so slowly to tell her about this thing called catfishing. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's it. I'm in the people business. I'm not in the real estate business. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, let's talk about avatar. Avatar is the new thing. Instead of calling it target market, we actually call it avatars these days. An avatar is actually creating um, your perfect person to whom you are advertising to or marketing towards. And every business must create one these days because of all the noise out there. So how do you talk to them? I mean, you're not going to use proper English if you're going to talk to, if you're trying to reach somebody with lower education, right? So you're really creating an avatar. So we're going to work on that thing. That's what we're going to do tonight. We have a little bit of time left. Um, okay. All right. Creating your avatar. You're going to look for pain points on that avatar. We're, we are solving problems for people because we're the people business. So you want, your, you want to know what your avatar's true pain points are. Who is your ideal customer? Allowing um, your content to produce content that appeals to their true pain points, their needs. This type of content is evergreen. 
Oh, I, that's some advertising I guess I got on there. <laughs> Engage this week, true market. If you're able to solve your customer's real pain points, your brand will be much more appealing to them. All right. I'm going to, I'll come to back to this if we have time. Okay. All right. But I'm going to come back to that. Okay. Here's where we're at. You're ask yourself these questions. And I know some of you want to draw a picture of your avatar, right? All right. Um, Christy, Christina says they're going after, and um, Tracy, we're, you're going after SFRs, right? Single family residents. Yes, ma'am. Correct, single family. And, yeah, and what, and what, let's see, are you talking lower end? Are you talking rentals? Are you talking, um, uh, working class, are you talking middle class, uh, upper end, what kind of SFR are you look, is your real estate target market? Right now, I would say we're looking for starter homes, which okay. is a broad term in my opinion, because my starter home, you know, was like a three bedroom and one we could live in for a while till we have, you know, two kids. So the like two, one bedroom or two bedroom, three bedroom, one to two bath, um, you know, 900 to like 1500 square feet, maybe 1800 square feet if they've added a little bit on or something. Okay, so let's narrow that down. All right. Uh, <laughs> let's go. So let's go by square footage first. Let's, I like the 900 to let's say 1200 instead. Okay. There's plenty of homes out there in that size. All right. Um, what kind of street is it on? Ideally a quiet one, but the homes we've really been looking at um, have been close to train tracks. Oh, okay. All right. Because starter homes are getting closer to train tracks, wouldn't you say? And they're closer to parks where homeless people are camping out. And they're close to other camping out areas you know um starter homes are in 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 eugene at least maybe in la I, probably not in la but okay um all right so now you're looking for a home your customer's age is moving out of that sfr needs to move up right or got another job whatever so your customer's age might be 40 30 what do you think? Probably I would four. say most of them are older. Older? Yeah. Like like uh, the most recent one, I think uh, he's probably 60 something. I, anyway. I would say that um, the, the 60 to 80 is probably what most of our customers are gonna be. The old dated homes okay. that need a lot of work. Okay, okay, okay. So now we're talking about neighborhoods that are well-established. Um, in other words, old dated homes, <laughs> neighborhoods, right? And the people have lived there a long time. So 60 to 80, got it. Um, and the customer lives in that home is what you're saying. Their financial well-being is, what do you think? Going on retirement? Is on retirement? Both both we've got like a foreclosure list that we're targeting that I think a lot of them um you know have been, are on retirement have been living okay 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 so we're working on one avatar the full foreclosure list would be another avatar okay we're just working on one so what you do is you make a lot of them like the bottom one says uh, oh no it doesn't say that it's the next slide but anyway you just come down to like uh we're going to do education marital status intelligence you know do they smoke do they not smoke this thing is, I mean, like you're just like trying to make a picture of who it is you're you're telecasting to. So uh, if it's a foreclosure list, um, that's another target market, right? And these might intertwine, but in that case, they're um, in dire straits, maybe on the foreclosure list. Does that make sense, guys? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So um, 
All right, let's say, I would say uh, in this case, the customer's marital status might be in your, in your avatar that we're talking about, might be widow, widower. Yep, that would probably be accurate. And education might be blue collar, like long time working blue collar home. Yep. Yep, okay, um, hard working. Yeah, they come from the age where, you know, the women were mostly stay at home moms and the right. husbands work. So it was probably one income. Right. Most of the time. And so sophistication is not. No. Something that they aspire to or have. Yeah. Um, internet skills. Probably not. Right. Not great ones. I'm sure they're probably like my mom. I love yeah. her, but she's not the best. Yeah. So we're just trying to create one avatar and picture one person, you know, and then you'll find a million of them out there. You know what I'm saying? Does that make sense, guys? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's see. What other questions can we ask? Um, uh, grandchildren, children, that kind of stuff. Um, uh, kind of music they like, um, TV shows they watch. Where they spend their time. Where they spend their time. Social media, what are their consumption habits? What are they? Yeah. How are they going to, yeah. So this target market, when you say their Facebook target market, right? Because uh, you're not going to advertise on Matlock, right? <laughs> Yeah, Facebook as opposed to Instagram, Snapchat, et cetera. Right, right, right. Okay. So so we've worked on one avatar here. All right. Do they wear blue jeans or khakis or a dress or, you know, this is just, you know, and I mentioned, do they smoke, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, and then so then you start getting into the mindset of these people and you start thinking, Okay, how do I talk to this person? Um, how do I, and what kind of picture could I put on Facebook that, or what would my brand be? And not necessarily the brand, but the Facebook and that, and that landing page, what would it be that would um, make them um, feel comfortable with me? that would I could associate with them. So the words you use, does, does anybody have any, for this, for this avatar, do we have any idea of what words we would use? Chris? <laughs> okay, why would they be moving, Christina? To a retirement home? To live with their kids? Yeah. Okay. That's the last one we have. The son um, inherited the home because his mom had passed away, which obviously, I guess, is a different avatar. So, yes, because they are moving into a home, or yes. Yeah. That's can't live there on their own right. anymore. You You're catching on, Christina Heard. <laughs> I would think a word would be easy. Easy? Yeah. Okay. You want um, them to know that it's, you know, like they're not, they're not out there on the internet. You know, they're not savvy. They're just like, I just want you to do the work for me, please. And make it yeah. as reasonable for me as possible. I agree. Trust. We trust. trust be a big one. Right. But, but you wouldn't probably use the word trust, whereas you might use the word easy, but you would still want to convey trust, right? By uh, staying. I would probably use the word trust. And how would you do that, Chris? Um, for somebody who is, somebody in that position is going to need, you know, if you are more sophisticated and obviously more experienced than they are, they're going to need to trust that you have their best interest in mind. They need to trust that you know what you're talking about. They need to trust that you understand the landscape and can be in their corner and help them get the most for their property or their you know, achieve their goals quickly. So you're kind of a guide for them. 
And so you need to kind of use the language that will, you know, get somebody to feel comfortable with you, with your style. And not, not everybody will be, but hopefully you're able to communicate that. And it's probably going to be more, you know, you know, more face-to-face -face relationship than an online email texting relationship. And there are a lot right. of different ways that you can communicate those things, but. So again, you wouldn't say the word trust. You <clears throat> would relay information that shows that they can trust you. In other words, you're not gonna say, trust me. I know what I'm doing, right? Uh, well, I don't know. I, I would, but it's. Would you? I, think, I, think I would too. You would? Oh yeah. I wouldn't use the word trust. I feel I'd like use it's it well. kind of like a failsafe. Sorry to interrupt. I kind of agree with Grace. I wouldn't. I wouldn't use the word trust. I feel like um, trust isn't something that you tell people. It's something that they have to feel from you. And so it's, people are going to know if they can trust you based on how you feel. You know. You have to demonstrate. And initially, right. And it's like you're not really necessarily going to get that other than having a really professional ad until you meet the person. So if you're talking about words to like put in an ad, yeah. um, I would use the word like downsizing, retiring. Like, are you downsizing? Are you retiring soon? Right. Um, nice. Are you sitting on a lot of cash in your house? <laughs> and equity is another possible headline. I don't know, just an idea. Um, okay, I think we're almost out of time here, so let me see what I got left here. Oh, here's here's just a um, a little chart for your avatar, and it's like, where do they get their information? That's the dark blue box. What are their goals and values? What are their challenges and pain points? Their pain points is standing up out of a chair. <laughs> Um, I'm a little confused as to what this avatar is. Um, is this just like a brainstorm for like creating a branding on something like an ad or is it, what is the yeah. avatar for? So, so what you want, so every okay. time you're sending out, um, creating, let's say you're creating a landing page. Okay. You want, and you're going to, and you're creating a, a, a post on Facebook or an ad on Facebook. You want it to, um, directly talk to your avatar. So your avatar rather than a target market, and a target market's much bigger, an avatar is looking at who is that person you're trying to reach. And there's, you know, there's 100,000 of them in the area of that same person. Um, maybe, maybe they had COVID, and that might be part of your avatar, and they need to get to a care facility. Or maybe your avatar is the child of the person who's, uh, like Christina said, that's another avatar, um uh, the child of a person who is moving into a care facility and they need to sell the house so you would just really want to like okay is that child now educated um or is he working at walmart you know that kind of thing so basically it's just getting really specific because it's like when you go buy a house if you don't know what you're looking for you're not going to find it so you're just basically you're looking for a particular customer Right. So you're just getting really specific. Right. Because right. there will be more than one of them. And, and the reason for that, it will determine the language you use, your communication oh. style. Chris? Sorry, I got to run. I got somebody at the front door. Okay. Well, we're like basically over because it's eight o'clock. Thank you for being here. I will. Uh, continue on just a little bit objections in the role you know and then and then that gold box there it tells about you know just ask what might be their objections you know which like chris mentioned it might be i don't trust you you know so you just want to have all these kind of things in mind before you create your promotional piece and i this is why i think people is the most important thing we're in the people business and therefore um, you you really want to know what you're in your mind written down and you might put up in your in your office all these different avatars lined up okay and then create a but you know just start with one 
and then cre and then create a landing page or or a mail piece or a Facebook ad or what have you for that. Okay. I'm going to go back to those pages I skipped. Uh, okay. Uh, avatars, you know, that's like about paid ads, and you want to keep in mind that your avatar is. Uh, So I'm just doing that so people can see it if they're looking at this later on. Okay, I'm gonna close out here, I think. Oh, there we go, that's your homework. Think about your marketing budget, all right? Hey, everybody, thanks for being here tonight. And you, if you wanna uh, reach out to me. Um, next one is September 20th, um, my, uh, YouTube channel is where you find the uh, uh, video playlist, that kind of thing. And it's Grace Whittacombe, uh, where you see, can I do, a, can you see my pointer? That's it, Grace Whittacombe on <laughs> YouTube. <laughs> okay. Um, and I think that's it. Any Anything else, anybody? No, this has been great. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for being yeah. here and, Thank and you. participating. Oh, there's Don. Hi. <laughs> yeah, hi there. Could you see it? Yes, I did. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah. Hey, and everybody who's still on, Don Martin is a, a independent um, inspector, building inspector, home inspector, if you need one. Don, I'm going to need one. Okay. Yeah, it actually... Um, I can't call it a home inspector because they require a home inspector's course. I'm an environmental inspector oh. that that has built houses, so okay. uh, I, I I can I, I can pretty well inspect anything, and uh, I would say 90% of what what a, a building inspector would find, I'll recognize. Um, although I can't call myself a building inspector. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. All right. So you're deeper then. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> All right, everyone. And, uh, <laughs> Thanks for being here, Don. Chris, I think he's already gone. Chelsea, thank you. Everybody else. Bye, Sherry. Bye, Asia. Bye, thank Julie. You. Bye, Hi, Chelsea. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, if you're if you're gonna stay on, you wanna talk, Julie? Sure. Yeah. Who wait till other people drop off? I mean Well You I want I you were on my list to call today. To get back to did you email me or leave me a long voicemail? Which was it? I emailed you. Do you want me to um just give you a call real quick or Yeah, I'll end meeting for all in this talk, okay? Huh? Yeah, I'm going to end the meeting and let's talk on the phone. Okay. 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 Sounds good.